Hello and welcome. You are watching a special edition of The Dis Unplugged. My name is Denny Sunderly and I'm joined here by my friend Corey Fiascanara. He's behind the camera. And we today have uh, a wonderful privilege to be able to have a special conversation with Pamela Landworth, who is the president and CEO of Give Kids the World Village here in Kissimmee, Florida. Thank you so much, Pam, oh for my goodness, carving my out time for Absolutely. us. Absolutely, anytime. This is huge <laughs> and a gift to be able to sit down and talk to you. Thank you, so, thank you. Um, we have a lot of viewers and listeners mm -hmm. who have been um, with us at the Diz for years. Mm -hmm. And then we have some friends who are new. And so right. we want to bring everyone up to speed on um, a little bit of the relationship with the Diz and Give mm -hmm. Kids the World and also the history of Give Kids the mm -hmm. World sure. and the mission that you all have. Um, so years ago, Pete Werner, owner mm -hmm. of the Diz, uh, decided um, in honor of Bob Varley, who was an original right. Diz Unplugged team member, to, um, to create a partnership and to put a challenge out there to the listeners and the viewers um, to help raise funds mm -hmm. and support right. for Give Kids the World. And he said, uh, he called it Power of 10. Right, And he Absolutely. said, 10 friends. 10 friends, $10. $10. How simple is that? And so he wanted to raise a million dollars. And I know, Pamela, we are very, very close. I know. At this moment, we're very, very close. So it's really exciting. So for those who are new, uh -huh. bring us up to speed, if you could, sure. on how Give Kids the World Village was born. Okay, absolutely. So for those of you who don't know a lot about us, we are the destination for children from around the world who have a critical illness and mm -hmm. one wish, and that's to come visit all the magic that Central Florida has to offer, mm -hmm. and that is Disney, right? It's mm -hmm. the Disney wish that absolutely. brings them here. And about half of all children, when they have the opportunity to express the wishes, to come here. Wow. And as simple as that may sound, um, before Give Kids the World, there were many children who weren't able to have their wish fulfilled. Mm. So Henry Landworth, who was the founder, owned um, a Holiday Inn right outside of the main gate. It was Holiday Inn Main Gate East. Okay. And because of Henry's background, um, he lost his childhood to the Holocaust. He spent five years in concentration camps with his twin sister, Margot. So mm -hmm. he has always had a very special place in his heart for children. So when the wish granting organizations would identify a child who wanted to come here, they would often call his hotel and say, hey, if we make all the other arrangements, would you put our family up for free? And of course, he would always say yes. Mm. And then one day, his general manager came in and told him that a reservation for that evening was canceled. It was uh, for a little girl named Amy from Virginia. She'd been battling leukemia. And unfortunately for her, time simply ran out. Mm. And um, she lost her battle before her wish was fulfilled. So, you know, I think Henry could have taken one or two different paths. He could have said, oh, that's too bad. We'll make sure we take care of the next family, but he didn't. He was very curious and he started asking, how could that happen? This is so simple. Mm. And what he found was it was taking about two to three months minimum for these wish granting organizations to make all the necessary arrangements. Okay. And he vowed then and there, he said, that can't happen. And that's how Give Kids the World, the seed um, for Give Kids the World was that little girl named Amy. And he hopped in the car and went to Disney and said, look, this is what's happening, will you help me? And they immediately said yes. And then of course SeaWorld, he popped in the car the same day and went to SeaWorld and said, can you help? That was a big day for a him. A huge day, a huge day for children, <laughs> right? Absolutely. And they both signed on, they got it immediately. So he literally streamlined the whole process so we can bring children down in less than 24 hours if need be. Oh. And that was, wow, a little over 33 years ago that it, that it, that Give Kids the World was founded. That's amazing. Now, knowing um, a little bit about you, mm -hmm. I know that leadership is a great passion of yours. Absolutely. And yeah. you get to lead a pretty amazing team here at Give Kids the World, a I very do. amazing team. You also get to lead from what was said um, at volunteer orientation, <laughs> 1,800 volunteer shifts a, a week. week. So a week. So for, for those <laughs> who are new to Give Kids the World, that's, it isn't, it, yes, there's a staff here, right, but the lion's right. share is done by the volunteers. By the volunteers. Right? We couldn't live without our volunteers. When you think about it, we are just like a resort. Now, when we started out those first three years, we literally operated out of that Holiday Inn Main Gate East, a housekeeping storage unit really wow. there. Okay. Uh, then the need became apparent as the numbers grew. We opened the village in 89 mm -hmm. with um, eight villas. And fast forward now we have 166 mm. villas. And even though it's all free to the families, you have to have all of the things that a normal resort would have, like guest services, reservations, housekeeping, maintenance, etc. cetera. Mm. Um, so we have a staff of 200 full and part-time, but to complement that, 
we have 1,800 volunteer shifts oh. a week. Now, to put that into perspective, about 84% of those are jobs we would have to provide paid labor for if we didn't, because they oper- you know, they do our food and beverage, mm-hmm. et cetera. They operate our attractions. Um, there are some things, like every family is met at the airport by a volunteer. We probably wouldn't be able to have you know the paid resources mm-hmm. to do that, but when you think about 1,800 shifts every week, and those are four-hour shifts, what a tremendous Amazing. commitment that is for mm. those volunteers, but it's, they are the lifeblood of our, of our organization. Well, and they love it. They like, love it. I could tell just it. from the little bit of time I was here for, for you know, right. for orientation. They love, they are called to it. They feel that. Well, so if you ask any of them, you, you know, they, um, the, they're reticent when we ask, well, how can we recognize you, right? Mm. Because they say they get so much more out yeah. of it than they put into it. And it's true. There's, there's a, a power about giving back. And giving of yourself it's you know there's so many ways that you can give but giving your time and your Mm -hmm. expertise and your talent you're giving your heart absolutely and these families they're just not used to that right they're used to battling insurance companies and juggle Mm -hmm. doctor's appointments and hospital stays but to come down here and experience unconditional love for a week by total strangers well and i was i was getting ready that was my next question is okay so the smith family is here from the mid-atlantic so what what do, what are they greeted with when they come here to give kids the world? What does a week look like oh here? Oh my gosh, I, I take me a week to really okay. describe it all, okay. but it's just Flip absolutely <laughs> amazing because again, most of our families haven't traveled before; they haven't had the wherewithal to take a vacation. So, and I travel a lot, and I think the Orlando Airport is very easy to get around. But if you're not a seasoned traveler, so we meet the families after they, you know, after security, okay. and then they're escorted down to get their luggage. Then they're you know escorted either to get a rental car for free mm-hmm. if that's their choice or we have you know bus transportation if not mm-hmm. and then they come to the village mm-hmm. right? and of course and we have to give them an orientation because of all of the things now prior to when they get here mm-hmm. we've already made a call to them and saying hey we're so excited about your coming are there anything special that your child likes any special characters oh, that's any special color I mean okay. we've painted the child's bedroom orange before because that was their favorite color. And anything that we can do to go above and beyond um, and to prepare them for the experience. In the early days, we wanted to keep everything a secret. So we didn't want to, but then we, there's a lot of people who like to plan and secrets aren't good. They want to know exactly what they have in (laughs) store. Because if you're a healthy family trying to get in all four Disney parks, both Universal Parks, SeaWorld and Aquatica, Mm, that are just the givens Mm -hmm. and then you can go to Gatorland you can go to the Kennedy Space Center to Bush Gardens that's massive so we have to sit down and you know, talk to them about it. They don't know which attraction is at which park. Okay. Um, so we go through a little orientation, but it's one-on-one in their mm. villa. And then the rest of it is a week of everything from, I like to say, life's simplest pleasures to the stuff dreams are made of. I mean, oh. imagine coming to a, a village that looks like it's straight out of a storybook mm-hmm. that celebrates Christmas every Thursday. So no matter what month, every Thursday, you know, we make it snow, Santa comes, uh, we do horse-drawn carriage rides, and they get oh. to get a gift. Every Monday is Halloween um, because you just don't know if these children are going to be able to experience it. So there's a party every night, and then every morning there's either characters. So Disney sends their characters, Universal sends their characters. Um, SeaWorld, we do a Skype session so they get to be trainers with actual trainers. We bring horses out. So, I mean, it's just all the unexpected things that ice cream parlor that's open from 7 30 in the morning till 9 30 at night so you can have a banana split for breakfast a before bed snack i mean just all of those mm. things a resort pool fishing and attractions that are all wheelchair accessible wow so for kids who even when they go to the parks they won't be able to get on many of the attractions because of their limitations mm-hmm. here there are no limitations oh i love that so i don't know I that was that. hopefully that was a close no, that was version, absolutely but. perfect that was perfect so for a lot of our viewers who have gotten the chance, and, and thank you so much for donating if you've Absolutely. gotten that chance and done that before, um, but for some who are considering mm-hmm. donating today, where do the donations go? How are they mm-hmm. best utilized when they, when they come here? Right. What, what happens right. with the donations? Well, I think what we're very proud of, we like to say we take care of business while we're taking care of hearts. You know, a nonprofit is a business, so you have to operate it like a business. Um, but we're very proud of our admin rights. So what you're judged on by a charity is out of every dollar that you get, mm-hmm. how much directly goes to the mission and how much goes for fundraising and overhead. And you're considered good as a charity, acceptable if 65 cents of every dollar raised goes to the goes to the actual mission and 35 cents to fundraising okay. and overhead. Okay. That's 
That's so the mix. So 65 that's 35 right. is the norm. Exactly. Okay. We're at 93 cents of every dollar spent goes directly to the mission. That's amazing. And seven cents goes to admin and overhead, which is unheard of. Um, but we're just, we just, we want everyone to know that we're good stewards of all the resources that they entrust to us. So just knowing that it's just all of these things take a lot of money, right? We have to raise $21 million a year just to operate the village. Wow. Plus an additional 38 million in in kind that if we don't get, we would have to pay for. And then on top of that, that we call our CapEx projects, which is just keeping the facility up up and running. I mean, we have 89 acres of buildings and venues and villas and those kinds of things. And that's usually an additional one million and a half to $2 million a year. Wow. So every dollar, we want to make sure that it's going to directly impact that family's experience. That's amazing. That's Very amazing. proud of that. Oh, proud you story be. to tell. You should be. <laughs> so um, what's on your wish list? for Give Kids a World. What projects mm-hmm. do you need to, what, if we were to donate today, right. what mm-hmm. what is on your horizon for the village? Okay. We have a lot of things on the horizon. One thing that we're very excited about is, you know, we lost Henry last yes. year. So and so we've always wanted to find a way to uh, be, have a testament to his legacy of generosity and love. And so we took down the ice cream palace. Now, rest assured, we're still serving ice cream. Okay. We would never have a day without ice cream being <laughs> served here. But we are going to be opening Henry's Starlight Scoops mm. um, in January. So we're very excited about that. It's an homage to his earlier days when he you know, ran the hotel where all the original astronauts stayed. So we're excited about that. Two of the biggest projects that we have going, the next one is... One of the parties that we do is called uh, Once Upon a Village, and it's actually a Pirates and Princesses party that we hold on Friday nights. We have this incredibly beautiful pirate ship that's a stage that we, you know, oh we my. hold, you know, we hold court on it and do these things. Well, unfortunately, because of the inclement weather and things like that, we're finding that we're not able to use it anymore because some. The, you know, the weather is damaged sure. and, and it's just sure. not safe anymore. So we're literally going to have to raise, you know, just raise it. Okay. And um, you still be able to use the concrete stage, okay. but we're going to need to rebuild okay. the, the the pirate ship because it's such a focal point right there on the lake where the kids go fishing oh, and sure. things. And so we're probably going to have to raise about a million and a half dollars to okay. be able to do that. Okay. And that's critical because that's one of the parties that, I mean, I can share with you um, so many stories. We've served well, 173,000. Um, well, and, and from 76 different countries. Oh, is that right? yes, yes. That's amazing. But just, just one of the stories that why the importance of this is we yes. had um, a young man come and visit us. He was 16 years old. Okay. And um, his wish was he didn't want to be invisible. Mm. Isn't that amazing? He wanted to feel important okay. because he was 16. You, he had no outward manifestations of okay. his illness. So people looked at him like he should be a normal 16-year-old. Right. And so he often was shunned and things mm. like that in school. He wanted to come down. Well, what did we do? We made him king for a day. And that party mm. was, you know, we took him up on the stage okay. and crowned him king, rolled out the red carpet. Okay. And I think he's still, we got you know, a letter from his mom that we're still seeing uh. the wonderful effects of that experience. So it's not just, you just don't know what that one story or maybe more stories are going to be why yeah. that is so important. So that's one project. Probably the next project is that we'll um, be adding to villas because we're bursting at the seams again. So probably by the end of next year, we're going to need to break ground on 24 new villas. Wow. Wow. Because we made a promise that we'd never turn down a child. And it's getting, yeah. yeah. You've got to have your villas. Got to have our villas. Mm -hmm. And um, I was told the other day Mm -hmm. that you all are... um, that you're caring for as many families during the month of December, this December, mm-hmm. than you ever have. Right, is that right. correct? And that's where the, the challenge is. So right. this year we'll do probably 8,400 families. That, just think back, 33 years, it was 300 Shh. families that first, you know, that first year. And the numbers aren't going down at right. all. Right. And so we've made a promise we'll never turn down a child. So yeah. if we're filled, uh, we will put them in off-property hotels. Okay. Our challenge now is that all of those off property hotels are now filling up and it's becoming more and more of a challenge okay. to find accommodations mm-hmm. for them mm-hmm. and we still haven't had to turn down a child but we just don't want to find ourselves in that position that is you can't come at Christmas how can you no. tell a child they can't come to the village no. at Christmas everybody yeah. wants to see the decorations at Disney and the yeah. Magic Kingdom and experience you now Mickey's very merry oh, and so it just be horrible yeah so we're one to plan ahead for that 
That's so great. Okay, so and I want to be mindful of your right. time, no, no but um, but if as we wrap up, mm-hmm. could you share a story that's near and dear to you about Give Kids the World, just just to help solidify if any of we want to know we want to know exactly how um, these families are touched so you know it's amazing you think of 173,000 families right and we don't know the fate of every child mm-hmm. our whole goal here is to write a new chapter in their mm-hmm. story because you know once you have a child that's diagnosed with a critical mm-hmm. illness you've lost control of your story you're at the mercy of insurance companies and doctors and those kinds of things so for one week we want to create a new story and we say once upon a time mm-hmm. it begins with you right okay. with all of our staff our volunteers tears our partners um, but we don't know we know that every story doesn't have a happy ending right, right. Um, and but the things that happen here are, hopefully will inspire them to go back and renew their battle but mm-hmm. if not some wonderful memories for them to reflect back on I have to tell you I just you know we get these um, when we do our unifocus which is our survey to say how was the experience okay. right and just a couple recently just resonated where we asked the mom what was her favorite memory of Give Kids World. Mm-hmm. And she said, when we were sitting around your resort pool and my daughter said to me, look, mom, we're one big happy family again. Okay. Okay. And that's all you could ever ask for. Right. right? Because they're getting pulled apart. They don't sit, they just, but for a little girl to say that, that? look, we're one big happy family again. Things that we take for granted, right? It's amazing, and they're just so, so many stories, you know. It's just I could go on and on, but sure. that one just hit me right in my heart by saying, wow. Uh, it's one of those added, okay. <laughs> added benefits, yeah. right? Yeah. Absolutely. That, that we brought them together as a family again. And the, the team and the volunteers here get to do that day after day. day after Every day. Every day. That's Every amazing. single day. And, um, you know, I so strongly believe that what binds us together is so much stronger than what pulls us apart. And there's so many things pulling us apart at our very Mm -hmm. seams, Mm -hmm. you know. And you think about when the families come here, they come from 76 different countries, every walk of life, every socioeconomic background, every religion, every political persuasion, every sexual orientation. And that... But what they get here, they don't care about the color of your skin. It's like, your child has leukemia, mind us. Let's share. You know, what works for you? What have you experienced? Mm -hmm. And our volunteers are brought here together because they want to be part of something bigger than themselves. Yes. Yes. And it's just such a microcosm here that if people could just get along (laughs) everywhere else like they do here. Yes. It's just an amazing place. So, you know, I encourage folks, if they're down here, we always have volunteer opportunities. We say that the best things, the way you can support us are give, serve, or share. Absolutely. And I was going to say that if you are watching this today and you're planning a Disney vacation or a universal vacation and you'd like to stop by and, and... you know, as a family mm-hmm. or by yourself with your traveling party, right. your friends, you can stop by and volunteer. It's um, a simple application Absolutely. on the website. On the website. The website is gkdw.org. Is that correct? It's either that or givekidstheworld.org. There, there you go. Mm-hmm. And and just click on that um, link that'll take you to the volunteer application. It's a two-hour volunteer orientation. Mm-hmm. Which you can do online, right? And that's Very simple. And, and come by and, and pick up a shift. Absolutely. One delicious. one day and scoop ice cream for breakfast or um, be a part of the Christmas party night oh, or yeah. drive a cookie cart, right. which sounds intriguing oh, to me yeah. personally. It is, or a pizza, so, or deliver pizza. Oh, it's so it's nice. just there's so many different things that you can do. Oh, and, you know, there's, a, there's so many wonderful charities yeah. out there. And you give money hoping that you're going to solve this social ill or, you know, help. Yeah. Uh, you know, cure this disease. Here, there's instant gratification. You you see that smile that you put on that child's face, oh, right? Okay. It's just that instant feeling like I've made a difference, and and we all need that. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. So, thank you so much, Pamela, for for letting us have this conversation with you. My and pleasure. It has been just an honor to get to meet you and to get thank to you. talk to you and hear about the village. Um, if you want to know more about the village, just log onto the website. You'll see tons of stories. You get tons of information, and um, you can learn how to donate. You can also learn how to jump in and do- donate your time as well. So, thanks for watching, and uh, thanks again, and thank Pamela. My goodness, and thank you to the entire Disunplug community for all you do for us. It's amazing. Yay! Thank you so much. Take good care.